All right, so we're going to take a look at graphing secant function. I've got uh, several examples to do. Uh, each example will have its own video, so uh, so let's look at it real quick. So graphing secant. Well, in order to graph secant, we need to graph cosine function first. So as a quick re review, just remember if you have y equals cosine x. Okay. So if we graph this, now I know this is going to be kind of quick, and this is just the basic cosine function. If you need to know, if you want to know, how, learn how to graph cosine function, I've got a video that goes into a lot more detail on how to graph the cosine function, so you can check that out. Well. We need the period, which we know is 2 pi over b, which this is 2 pi over, and b is the number in front of x, so you can see that's a 1, and so our period is 2 pi. So we're going to graph from 0 to 2 pi. And then what we want to do is we want to split this, break this period up into four equal intervals. So we need the midpoints. So to find the midpoint, remember you just add this term and this term and half it. So if we take 0 plus 2 pi, that gives me 2 pi. And then if I half that, I get pi. And so there's pi. And then for this one, if I do 0 plus pi, well, that's pi. And then if I half that, I get pi over 2. And then halfway between pi and 2 pi, well, pi plus 2 pi is 3 pi. And then if I half that, I get 3 pi over 2. Okay, So you need to get those points. And then we need our amplitude, which in this case is 1. So I know my largest and smallest value is going to be 1 and negative 1. And so we're graphing from 0 to 2 pi. We're just graphing it over one period. So remember, cosine starts out at its maximum, and then it goes to 0, and then it goes to its minimum, and then back to 0, and then back to its maximum. And your cosine function would look something like that. Okay. So if you once you get your the period that you're going to graph it over, you, ha you need to break it up into these intervals here. And then once you break it up, no matter what the numbers are, that's how the cosine function is going to always do. Max, zero, min, zero, max. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at the example. All right. So here's our first example on graphing secant. Uh, all right, well, to graph the secant function, we need to graph the cosine function first. And the reason we do that is we use the cosine function as a guide. Okay, so let's look at y equals one half cosine one fourth x. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get the period. And we know that's 2 pi over b, which that would be 2 pi over 1 fourth. Okay, b is the number in front of x. And so that's 2 pi divided by 1 fourth or times the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4. And so that gives me 8 pi. All right, so let's go ahead and draw this. So I'm going to graph from 0 to 8 pi. And then I need to break this up into four equal intervals. So let's write all that out. So I'm going to need the midpoint between 0 and 8 pi. So I've got 0 plus 8 pi is 8 pi. And then I half the 8 pi, which gives me 4 pi. So this would be 4 pi. 
and then the midpoint between 0 and 4 pi. So 0 plus 4 pi is 4 pi, and then I half the 4 pi, which gives me 2 pi. And so this midpoint would be 2 pi. And then I need the midpoint between 4 pi and 8 pi. So 4 pi plus 8 pi is 12 pi. And if I half the 12 pi, that gives me 6 pi. And so this would be 6 pi. All right. Now that we have the period marked off and we're ready to graph, except for we need the amplitude, which gives us the maximum and minimum value. So you can see the amplitude of cosine is one half. Okay, that's the number in front of cosine. And so my maximum value will be one half. My minimum value will be negative one half. All right. So if you remember from the first part of the video, remember cosine starts at its maximum and then it goes to zero and then it goes to its minimum then it goes to zero and then it goes to its maximum and then when we draw in the cosine function we draw it in with a dashed line that means it's hidden and the reason we do this is because this this graph here is not part of the uh, of the graph we need for secant okay this is just used as a guide and that's it okay so now we need our vertical asymptotes and our vertical asymptotes well if you remember secant x is equal to 1 over cosine x Okay, and the vertical asymptotes is where secant is undefined. Well, secant is undefined when cosine is zero because we would have one over zero. And you can see cosine is zero here at two pi and here at six pi. And so we would have our vertical asymptotes at two pi and six pi. Okay. All right. Well, let me, let me put that back. All right. So now when we draw in the uh, graph of secant, well, right here at the maximum values and minimum values, we'll draw in our U-shaped branches here. Okay. Like that. And that would be the graph of secant, which makes sense because if you look at this, you see how your cosine function, you see the y values, how they're getting smaller and smaller. See where it's one, one half and then one fourth and point one, point zero zero one. The closer we get to the x-axis, the y, the y values for cosine are getting smaller and smaller. And when the values of cosine get smaller and smaller, that denominator right here is getting smaller and smaller. Okay, and so if the denominator is getting smaller, that means the whole fraction is getting larger and larger. So that's why it's going up to infinity here. Same reason here, and then the same reason here and here that it's going to negative infinity because see it's getting smaller and smaller. It's just the numbers down here are negative, and so that's why it's going to negative infinity. So I hope this helped. Check out the other videos. Uh, uh, give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.